Hey guys, Bart from TST Industries here. In this video, we're gonna show you the installation of our Gen 2 LED flasher relay on a 2016 and up Kawasaki Ninja ZX-10R. As you can see, we've replaced the OEM signals on this bike with our LED signals, and now they're in hyper flash. Anytime you change your OEM signals to LED type lamps, you will have a significantly faster flash rate because of how the signaling system on these bikes is designed. So you can either wire in resistors where you have a cumbersome heated element dangling around the inside of your bike, or you could just have a plug and play replacement for the OEM setup. And uh, that'll restore your flash rate to 85 cycles per minute. If you don't like 85 cycles per minute and you wanna further customize your flash rate, strip off the gray cover and adjust the flash rate to your liking. We'll show you how to install this unit and also how to adjust it in just a few easy steps. All right, so let's begin. All right, we'll begin by grabbing a four millimeter Allen and identifying the first screw that needs to come out. Now, what I like to do on these bikes is flex the seat back. It prevents me from having to undo a lot of different components and it doesn't harm the bike. So we will remove this screw here. It is pretty short. So once you get it loose, and make sure to get your hands in there and grab it because it can fall down into the uh, sub tray there and that would be a pain in the butt to take out. So once that's out, there's another screw up front here. Same four millimeter Allen head. We will remove that screw. Once we remove these screws, this component's free to come out. It does have several friction fasteners underneath there and also one fastener that needs to be dislodged this way. It also has a Velcro component right about here. So let's unlatch the front first, and then go down the line here. And there we go. All right, so you have these friction fasteners that fit into grommets here and then there's one sliding component that goes on here and then you have the Velcro patch here. You can set that to the side and now we'll find a black rubber cover under which we'll find our OEM signal relay. So now let's use that same Allen key to remove this fastener. And now we'll be able to flex this component and get more access under here. Now up here, you have two friction fasteners up top. So we'll need to slip them out and then we'll raise this whole uh, forward fairing piece. And now contained within this rubber piece here, we'll find two of these relays. We will focus only on this one. This is the flasher relay. We'll slip it that way to dislodge it from its keeper tab. Now this is sort of a tight fit. But it's a lot easier than actually removing all of the components to get to it. All right, so now I've taken it off. It does have a rubber keeper that slips over the tab on the relay and that rubber keeper slips onto this metal tab here that holds it to the bike. We need to know that for how it gets reassembled. So let's get the rubber keeper off. I'm gonna reuse that on our relay. Let's get the plug out of it. It's a Sumitomo 3 conductor plug. Press to release and withdraw. We'll grab our TST relay. It goes in just the same as the OEM relay. Slip on the rubber keeper, and then that goes back on that tab. What I like to do before I perform these reassembly tasks is test the system, make sure we have operating signals. And it looks like we're operating at about 85 cycles per minute here, as you can see. So no matter what kind of uh, lamps you have for signals, you will be flashing at 85 cycles per minute. If for some reason you want to get more fancy than just the 85 cycle per minute 
OEM flash rate, you can slip off this gray cover here. Actually, the red portion came out. So what we're gonna do is take out the circuit board and plug it back into the red portion. As you can see it's flashing again. So now we'll identify the flash rate adjuster, which is here, the blue piece. And it has a micro Phillips adjuster dial. And as we adjust clockwise, we will produce a very, very slow flash rate. The opposite effect is a very, very fast flash rate when you spin it to the counterclockwise end. So at this point, you just pick a flash rate that works for you. Me personally, I do like the 85 cycle per minute OEM flash rate. So I'm gonna keep it around there. So now, we get that circuit board out. And within the gray cap, there is a channel on one of the sides where the circuit board sits. And bottom it out and then align it with the plug. Plug it all back in, push it in until it makes a snapping noise. And now that's ready to go back onto the bike. Just like I showed you guys how to slip it off the rubber keeper. I'm gonna slip that back on in there. And like I said, it's a little bit cumbersome in here. It's a tight fit. So you might not see exactly what I'm doing, but that's why I explained it in a previous step. All right, now I have it sitting on the frame, on the air box rather, but it is fixed in place. So I'm gonna get the rubber cover on it and get this tongue in its slot to lock it in place. Get it under the tank. And now we can get this component back in place. Get the friction fasteners in first from the top. Align the screw hole here. Get that screw back in there. Once that's done, we can bring back the other panel that covered all of this and get that mounted. Now we can bring this panel back and uh, start by getting this slide component onto this tab. And then from there, we can get all the friction fasteners pushed in to the grommets underneath. And then up top here by the tank, we'll have to engage the front, hold the tabs from the front back. All right, that looks good. And the Velcro here is engaged. Now you can get the longer screw four millimeter Allen wrench and get that threaded in. Now remember on the front screw here, you are threading into a rubber well nut that needs to be mushroomed. It will not have a hard stop. So once you feel some good resistance, that's it. Over tightening this component will damage it. So be mindful of that. Now this last short screw, be careful how you insert that into its hole under the seat. Like I said before, it's kind of a pain in the butt to try to fish it out if it falls in. All right, once that's tightened, this installation's complete. I'd like to test the system again, make sure everything is working properly because that's how I roll. All right, we're done. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, subscribe to our channel. Check out our parts on our website. And uh, ooh, also check out our blog. We have cool articles about a multitude of things. So it's TST Industries forward slash blog. Check that out. All right, I'm done. I'm out. See you guys next time.